Welcome to lecture number 28 for ECE 461, Unstable Systems and Multi-Loop Feedback. Now the problem we're looking at in this lecture is what happens if you have an unstable plant. Previously we've looked at how to stabilize plants that have stable poles. Uh, now we're looking at an unstable pole. Now here I've got a pole at uh, minus 1. If I have a pole at minus 1, you're able to cancel it, and that's what we've been doing through at Locus. If I have a pole that's in the wrong spot, causing trouble, get rid of it. Put a zero right on top. And when you cancel the pole, you're never going to hit it exactly. Uh, suppose, for example, I'm just off by 1%. The zero doesn't quite cancel it. So when I take the step response of this system, what I wind up with is you know, three terms. The term over s plus 1 is really small. That's what the zeros do. The zero makes the initial condition really small. It'll never be exactly zero. On paper, I can cancel exactly and make that zero. In practice, I'll always be a little bit off. So in this case, I've got a very small initial condition that goes away. Likewise, there's not a problem ignoring this pole. It's not going to have a huge effect on the output. So if I cancel a stable pole, that's OK. It's the initial condition small, and it gets smaller. In contrast, suppose I try to cancel an unstable pole. I've got a pole at plus 1. I don't like that pole, so let's get rid of it. Put a zero right on top of it. If I miss by the slightest amount, then what happens is when I do my partial fraction expansion, this term is no longer zero. It's close to zero, but not exactly zero. So what that means is that this term is now minus 0 0.003 e to the t. e to the t blows up. e to the t exponentials will always speed out a constant, so this term will actually blow up no matter what. In this case, I can't ignore that term. This is going to have a huge impact very shortly. So you can't ignore unstable poles when you try to cancel them. That basically says you can't cancel unstable poles. In terms of root locus, if I did put a zero right on top of it, this pole goes to zero. It's always unstable. There's not a dang thing I can do about it. Uh, in that case, you basically have to throw the system away. What that means, the rule of thumb with root locus, never, 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 never cancel unstable poles. You can't do it. If you miss by the slightest amount, they'll blow up. And this actually happened fairly often. Uh, NASA, for example, has been trying to control rockets. Rockets are basically a pendulum balancing on a ball of flame. That's an unstable system. It's like trying to balance a yardstick on your hand. With some practice, I can do it, but it's not easy. The unstable pole is the rocket, or like a yardstick. If I do nothing, the yardstick's going to fall over. That's the pole at plus one. Plus I have some other poles. If I had a system like this, try to design a feedback system to stabilize that. That's akin to trying to stabilize a rocket, keep the rocket balancing on its ball of flame. So here's the design problem. I've got an unstable system, design a feedback controller to stabilize it, give me no error per step input, 20% overshoot, and verify your design with VisSim or Simulink. So that's the goal. Now the first approach, this is one that won't work. What I'm going to do is take that pole at plus one and get rid of it. Put a zero right on top of it. Add a pole at s equals zero that makes the type one. So these two poles come together, uh, split apart, find the point on the root locus where the damping ratio is point, uh, 0.4559, 20% overshoot. That turns out to be minus 0.4 plus j.8, uh, two to one ratio. At that point, make the gain one. So k is 0.422. Here's k of s. So everything looks fine. If I simulate it, ignore this pole. Everything simulates just fine. Meet the requirements. Now let's throw it in VisSim. Here's my plant. Here's my compensator. And note, I don't cancel that pole. I don't not include it. It's a double negative, but I do include that pole in the plant, include the zero in the compensator. These should cancel. And everything's fine. Here's my step response. 20% of her shoot settles out and then blows up. The reason this blows up is uh, VisSim is a numerical solution. When you do numerical solutions, the zero is not at exactly plus one. The pole's not at exactly plus one. So this isn't exact pull zero cancellation. That small initial condition eventually blew up. This is e to the t. Uh, e to the 10t is a huge number. My very, very, very small initial condition times e to the 10t blows up. So this will always fail. Uh, this actually has been done. NASA tried many, many times in the 1950s to cancel unstable poles, and it doesn't work. 
Uh, for example, here's a YouTube video. Seems kind of strange including a YouTube video inside a YouTube video. Let's kill the sound. Uh, this is NASA. What NASA was trying to do back in the 1950s is balance a rocket on the ball of flame. And the first approach is cancel the unstable pole. And that looks like it works really well in simulation. I've got a nice frequency response. The frequency response is identical to a system that behaves really, really well. Try it. And here's what happens. It went unstable. So the engineers have scratched their heads thinking, well, crud, what happened? Uh, go back to the drawing board, try it again, come up with a better compensator, and again, didn't work. So they would try, go to the scratch their heads, go back, try to model the system even more accurately, get a couple more decimal places in the pole zero cancellation, and it works for a little bit longer, but eventually the unstable pole will blow up. Eventually, e to the t always beats out any constant. No matter what you do, the thing's going to go unstable. So, again, it's been tried. You can't cancel unstable poles. NASA's tried it. NASA spent millions of dollars trying to cancel unstable poles. It just don't work. So, if canceling an unstable pole doesn't work, we need a different method. So, here's the idea. I know how to design feedback controllers for systems that are stable. Uh, that's using a lead, PID, take your pick. Change the problem. Change the problem so that the unstable system becomes the stable one. So when you actually close the feedback loop twice, the first feedback loop, K1, all that does is stabilize it. I don't care about the design specs. I don't care about the steady state error. I don't care about the settling time. All I care about is make the system stable. Once it's stable, K2 uh, tries to have make a stable system meet the design specs. We know how to design K2. We have already done that. That's a multi-loop feedback. So as an example, Suppose we take that same system we had before. I have an unstable pole, two stable poles. I want to come up with a feedback controller that gives no error for step input, 20% of a shoot for step input, and a 2% settling time of 4 seconds. What I'll do is I'll do that in two steps. The first step is just stabilize it. I've got a pole at plus 1. Let's get this out of the way. Pole at plus 1 and minus 1 and minus 5, minus 10. I can't get rid of the pole at plus 1. That's unstable. But if I get rid of the pole at minus 1 and stick it out at minus 10, now the root locus becomes this. The pole at plus 1 and minus 5 come together, split apart. In this region right here, I've got a stable system. And I don't really care where I pick in this system, in this region. Anything that's stable, uh, once I stabilize it, I'll then design K2 design a feedback controller for a stable system. So that'd be the first step. Uh, pick a compensator that pulls the root locus left so that somewhere the system's stable. And here's one candidate. Cancel the pull up minus one, move it out to minus 10. Now pick up a spot over here. Uh, somewhat arbitrarily, I'll just pick minus one because that's a nice number. I'll pick K to make it put the closed loop dominant pull at minus one. Then the compensator that does that, here's your plant, g times k. Uh, I want to force this to be 1, or at s equals minus 1, to be minus 1. That puts this point on the root locus. Actually puts, places the closed loop poles at minus 1. If you analyze this, I get 0.1389 at 180 degrees. The 180 degrees tells you that minus 1's on the root locus. And yeah, I already knew that. The amplitude tells you k. So k is whatever it takes to make the gain 1. 1 over 0.1389 is 7.2. That's k. And here is k of s. Now that I have this system, I can replace g times k1 over 1 plus g times k1, find that closed loop system, and there's the pole at minus 1. That's the one I placed. And it's third order, so I've got two other poles somewhere. Treat this as my new system. Now design a feedback controller k2 to control this system and meet the design specs. Again, uh, G2 isn't great. It doesn't meet the requirements in any way. The steady state error is wrong. The DC gain is wrong. The settling time is wrong. The overshoot is wrong. At least it's stable. Now that G2 is stable, let's design K2. Uh, this guy right here, G2, consists of all this. 
Mathematically, it doesn't care. How I get G2 is just I've got G2. That's my net system. Find K2 to meet your design specs, meaning I want it to be type 1 and want to place the closed loop dominant pole at minus 1 plus J2. So to do that, I'll look at the root locus. I want to put the dominant pole at minus 1 plus J2. I've got a pole at minus 1, minus 2, and minus 11. The pole at minus 11 is not too bad. The pole at minus 1 and minus 2 are causing trouble. So let's get rid of them. Pick K2 to cancel the poles at minus 1, minus 2. Replace them with the pole at S equals 0. That makes it type 1. And the second pole, I slide that around until minus 1 plus J2 is on the root locus. Meaning, I slide this pole around until the angle is set up to 180 degrees at minus 1 plus J2. So to do that, I know that G2 times K2 at minus 1 plus J2 is minus 1. Take the part that I know. Evaluate it, and I get minus 127 degrees, meaning that the angle of S plus A must be 52.12 degrees, or whatever it takes to make this 180. Now that I know this side, I can find A. Uh, tangent of 52 is opposite over adjacent. Opposite is 2. Adjacent, then, is 2 over tangent of 52 degrees. And then A is that value plus the real part, plus 1. So there's A. Gives me A is 2.55. So here is K2 of S. And G2, K2. Now to find the gain, uh, G2 times K2 at minus 1 plus J2 should be minus 1. The angle works. The angle just says I found the pole correctly. If it's incorrect, what you probably forgot to do is you forgot to uh, add in this one when you found A. Um, if I do it right, this has got to be 180 degrees. This point has to be on the root locus. Gain's wrong, so pick K to make the gain 1. K is 0.8. So here's K2 of S. Now what I wound up with is, here's my feedback controller. I've got two compensators, K1, that stabilizes it, places the closed loop dominant pole at minus 1. And then K2. This one meets the design spec. And also notice, it doesn't really matter where I pick the pole for this system. I put the pole at minus 1, then immediately canceled it. So put it wherever you want. It's actually a little bit easier if I pick this pole to be real, because that makes it easier to design K2. I'm canceling a real pole. If this is complex, uh, then i got to come up with some filter to cancel complex poles. And the acid test. Does it work? To test it, here's my plant. Again, don't simplify it. Here's your plant. It's got a pole at plus 1, minus 1, minus 5. Here's my first compensator. Close the feedback loop. That should stabilize it. Here's my second compensator. That makes it type 1. And places the closed loop dominant pole at minus 1 plus J2. Take the step response to the overall system. And sure enough, there's my 20% overshoot. DC gains 1. Settling time is 4 seconds. That works. That meets my design specs. This is a case where it really helps in grading if you just give the plot like this one. Um, there's many ways to solve this problem. This compensator is somewhat ar arbitrary. Where you place the pole, I picked it minus one, that's somewhat arbitrary. Again, there's many, many solutions that work. The real test is, does it, do you get 20% of a shoot? Is the settling time four seconds? Is the DC gain one? If you get this plot, you probably did it right. Uh, and also note that when I did this, I didn't cancel any unstable poles. It is possible to stabilize this without canceling the unstable poles. And that's important. If I let this run longer and longer, it'll still work. If I did cancel the unstable pole, eventually it would blow up. Again, you can't cancel unstable poles. And the last thing to notice is open loop, this is unstable. Open loop unstable systems are okay. What I really care about is closed loop. Can I stabilize the closed loop system? Um, and again, of course you can. Uh, so that's lecture number 28, designing feedback controllers for unstable systems. And kind of a sidelight, this also works for other systems. If my G of S had poles on the J mega axis, again, it's a hard it's difficult to design a feedback controller in one pass, but I could use the same technique. If I have complex poles, first stabilize it. Once it's stable, then meet the design specs. So that's lecture number 28, designing feedback controllers for unstable systems and multi-loop feedback.